spoiler filled review for How to Train Your Dragon 3, which means spoilers. So get out of here if you haven't seen, <laughs> seen it already. Or if you don't care about spoilers, that's fine too. But I don't want you complaining about it and giving away everything, including the end. I have not cried at the end of a movie this much since Toy Story 3. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this was such a great movie. This is like the perfect trilogy for DreamWorks. DreamWorks is finally learning how to make Pixar movies. This is about on par. It's got the same level of emotion that a, that, I mean, that a good Pixar movie has. That stuff like Toy Story 3 or Incredibles or Up, right? All the, or Inside Out, like all the very emotionally driven Pixar movies have, this has that. This is such a fantastic movie. The villain was kind of the same as the other ones. You know, I'm going to trap and kill all the rare dragons like that. Okay, but the villain wasn't really the focus in this movie. The, the focus of the movie really was more of Hiccup and the dragon, Hiccup and Toothless, and him having to maybe consider having to let Toothless go so that Toothless could be on his own as happiness with the, the Light Fury, I think she was called. They don't get the Light Fury a name. It's just credited as Light Fury. I'm like, that's a shame. Because, I don't know, I wish that they had given a name to the to the Light Fury. Um, but yeah, they're actually, does anybody else find it weird that there's been, like, a year gap between the second and the third movie? And Hiccup has a full beard, but even with the full beard, he still has, like, the nerdy, high-pitched voice of, like, did this kid's voice not ever change? Because he still has the same voice. You know, they could have at least maybe deepened his voice slightly. So it's a shame that they didn't do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, T.J. Miller in this movie, you know, he's always funny. And I really enjoy his character in this one. Even more so in this one. You know, there's a joke in the movie that only I laughed at. And people were looking at me like I was crazy. And it's when he calls Hiccup Hickey. Which, obviously, that's my last name. So, it's like, come here, Ricky, we need to talk. I was laughing, and people were looking at me like, it's not that funny. I'm like, it's funny, it's not that funny. And I'm laughing because I'm the only one who's laughing at that joke, because it is only funny to me. So, I'm glad that that joke is included in there. I, I thought that was... It was just so unexpected. I went, wait a second, did he say Hickey? <laughs> I was cracking up more than I should have at that joke. People were thinking like I was insane. <laughs> Um, my goodness, the score in this movie is so good. The score in this movie is just the best. Okay, if, one, if this movie is not nominated for the Best Animated Film at the 2020 Oscars, because what does Disney have coming out next year that's animated, or this year, rather, since 2019? What does Disney have this year that's animated? Toy Story 4, which is an unnecessary sequel, which I'll probably still see, but it's unnecessary because it's thrown under perfectly. So they have Toy Story 4 and they have Frozen 2, which I will not see because I do not want to see Frozen 2 at all. I have like zero desire. That's the only two movies that Disney has coming out. That's very slim competition. Or that's the only two animated Disney movies that they have coming out. That's very slim competition. So I think that, I mean, and they just, Spider-Verse just beat them last week for um, over Incredibles 2 and Rick Off 2. So Disney can lose. And, yeah, so I'm hoping that How to Train Your Dragon 3 is at least nominated. It may even win. I don't know what else is coming out this year that's animated off the top of my head, but, yeah, this was well worth it. It was not like, you know, because DreamWorks sequels tend to have this track record of being vastly inferior to the previous one with, like, the Shrek movies. Shrek 1 was good, Shrek 2 was better, but then we had, like, Shrek 3 and 4 that were mediocre? And then awful. <coughs> and then we have Madagascar, which I, I personally like all the Madagascar movies, but I know a lot of people don't. A lot of people are disappointed with the third one and the Penguins one, even though I really like the Penguins one. But the general consensus tends to be that the sequels are always inferior. But How to Train Your Dragon doesn't have that. They're all just as good. Some may even say better than the ones that came before it. This is like their perfect franchise. I don't know who's on their team that's making this happen, how much influence they have over this movie, but yeah, How to Train Dragon 3 is fantastic. I, and I got a little too excited because I went, okay, cool, DreamWorks is, you know, they're finally 
a worthy successor or worthy competition for Disney and Pixar. What else do they have coming out? Which I was like, okay. Every movie that they have coming out from now on is a sequel. From like now to the foreseeable future. And it's not even sequels to good movies. It's like Boss Baby 2, Trolls 2, Croods 2, Madagascar 4, supposedly, Puss in Boots 2, Shrek 5, supposedly, which they lied because they said Shrek 4 is going to be the last one. They lied about that, apparently. Like, oh my goodness, no. No, 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 no. Right? Like, kind of treat your dragon as, like, their perfect franchise. Like, and I'm talking about, they have a movie that sounds interesting, but it's in development purgatory. It has been for several years. It's about humans and shadows. Like, that one sounds kind of interesting. I want to see that one, but that one's probably never going to happen, because their main thing is, uh, seems like I'm getting off track. How to Train Dragon 3. Fantastic movie. I loved it. And it was surprisingly mature. And I don't mean, like, inappropriate. Like, it's definitely not kid inappropriate. Like, a kid can go see it. It's still appropriate for kids. But I'm saying it's mature in the sense that, like, Inside Out or Up or Toy Story 3 is mature. It's got a lot of themes of just growing up and going into adulthood and having to let go of loved ones and all this kind of sort of heavy stuff that, you know, like, I got teared up at the end, especially at the end with the... Uh, him going back to the Dragon Island, him, being, him and Astrid and their kids being the only ones that know about the Dragon Island, and then seeing Toothless, and Toothless kind of being like, whoa, who's this crazy guy, like, attacking our island? And he kind of, like, lunging and trying to attack him, he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And he puts his hand out, like that, like he did in the first movie, to, to nudge for him, to this goes, yeah, attack him! And I was like, I cried. That was the perfect ending to this movie. Oh, uh, man, this is... One of the most heartfelt, emotional films that DreamWorks has ever put out. And I'm glad to say it is a worthy conclusion to How to Train Your Dragon.